Hi friends, last week me and my family went on a bit of a road trip and during that trip I was able to focus on some photography. We stayed in an interesting town along the way called Quartzsite, Arizona, which is exactly the type of town that I get inspired by photographically. And this time um, I was, like many times, I was able to take along a new lens. It's always fun to try something new in the field and this lens was no exception. This is the new lens for Fuji and some other mounts from TT Artisans. This is the 35mm 1.4 which is different than the older M mount full frame 35 1.4 from TT Artisans. And in this video I want to show you what I was able to capture on our trip with this lens as well as some family moments that um, I've documented over the holiday. TT Artisans did send this to us as a gift and even kindly monogrammed our name on this lens. Um, no one has ever done that and I thought that was a very interesting appeal to our ego. In spite of that though, I will be giving my honest review of this lens and we will be not not be keeping it. We'll be adding this to our massive gear giveaway associated with dogoodwithyourcamera.com. By the way, the deadline for submissions for that contest is only a few days from now. So if you were able to photograph or video some good works being done in 2020, go to our website, submit your work. You don't even have to have the best work to qualify to win something. And who knows, you might win the X100V from Fuji, which we have to give away, uh, some lenses from Tamron, Viltrox, per gear or Moment. Um, or some stuff from B&H at KEH, LensRentals.com, or MusicBed, or maybe a camera bag from Hazard 4 or F-Stop. There's a lot of great stuff that we're giving away to celebrate doing good, so head over to DoGoodWithYourCamera.com to check it out. And remember, this contest will be happening again in 2021, so if you missed out, there's still another chance next year. So I want to start this review uh, a little different than other lens reviews. I want to start out with what to me is more important than the lens itself and that's the photography. We'll let the photography tell the story of the adventure that we went on and also let the work speak to the quality of the lens. We'll get to the nuts and bolts of the review after that but for now come with me to Quartzsite, Arizona where our journey begins. For me, in rural small towns, one thing you see much more than in the suburbs or big cities is people living life with their guard down. Most people in these towns exist in more humble circumstances, and in many ways their lives spill out of their dwellings. It's harder to bottle it up and hide the trappings of their existence behind a facade of curb appeal. And that is one reason I'm drawn to document small towns. It's more raw, interesting, and to me, it's absolutely beautiful. But Quartzsite is one of the most unique townships I've seen in my journeys in the America's Southwest. They call this the boondocking capital of the world. There are RVs everywhere, from the truly temporary to the long term. To the temporary that got turned into the long term. But as much as I love to get lost in small towns, responsibilities of parenthood require that I provide the type of adventures that appeal to those with underdeveloped attention spans. In other words, my children. And for them and for me, the desert is both a playground and a history lesson. So I hope you enjoyed those photos. I know that I enjoyed taking them. And as always, I'm grateful to have the chance to experience new things photographically and certainly trying new lenses is part of that magic. So let's get into the nitty gritty. The TT Artisans 35mm 1.4 feels good in the hand. 
feels like it's mostly metal and I love how small it is. It weighs a mere 180 grams and is great if your goals include being inconspicuous and traveling light. Unlike many Chinese lens manufacturers, TT Artisans have given us a lens with a clicked aperture this time. Thank you. This lens has detents at half stops up to f4 and um, at 5.6 to f16 just on the full stops. It has a minimum aperture of f16. I like the little lens cap though not everyone will because it's a screw on. Um, Sun will wish that it had a pinch style lens cap rather than a screw on. Um, the screw on cap will not work with lens filters, but I do like that it sc screws on quickly. Um, the threads aren't very, I guess they're, they're short, so it, it screws on really fast. There is no lens hood c that comes with this um, lens to reduce flaring and make no mistake, this lens does struggle with flaring. These more affordable brand lenses need to really consider shipping with quality lens hoods as flaring is almost always bad. And for me, in the deserts of the American Southwest, the sun is almost always at full power. So it's something that I definitely take into consideration. One other thing to consider is that at least my copy, um, it, it goes on the mount too tightly. It's kind of a little bit snug. And that makes it difficult, especially to get off because it's a small lens and it's difficult to find purchase every, everywhere where it, you can get a good grip, it turns. Um, so it's not the easiest lens to get on and off. I'm sure um, through time that would improve as it kind of breaks in. And I'm sure that not every um, TT Artisan's 35mm 1.4 will struggle with that because I'm willing to bet the tolerances are, are different. But at least with my copy, it's a little snug. It probably goes without saying that this is a manual focus only lens, which I personally do not mind at all. And at such a low cost, if you're not sure that you will like manual focus or not, it's an easy purchase to make to find out. Optically, the lens has seven elements in six groups. The aperture has 10 blades, which are not rounded. As far as sharpness, there really isn't anything special here. With the documentary style photography I like to do, um, having optical perfection is utterly unnecessary. Even in a portrait situation, I'm not bothered um, by less than perfect sharpness. However, with the rural landscape shots that I like to take, I do like to have things on the sharper end of the spectrum. And I actually regret that I used this lens as, as my main lens on that tour of Quartzsite. Fortunately, I did have um, a backup. I shot uh, most things with the 50R as well, um, which gave me the quality I really want and really need um, for the projects that I'm working on. Stay tuned for more on all of that in other videos. Still, for social media and posting here on YouTube, um, the rural landscape shots that I did get with these, this lens, they're fine in spite of the softness, um, again, for, for that platform. And if you guys do get this lens and you want the sharpest image that it can provide, I'd suggest shooting it at f4 or 5.6 where it seems to do the best. But wide open and at f16, everything is soft. When it comes to the out of focus areas, this lens is surprisingly composed. It controls chromatic aberration very well. Again, for documentary, um, a little chromatic aberration is fine and I feel that it's well within the taller limits for me personally. And as far as bokeh quality, um, it does have some character, and I would say that this qualifies as maybe a bit of a character lens. It's not the smoothest bokeh, um, but it's not crazy either. The bokeh balls are a bit cat's eyed, and they do have a hint of soap bubble edges. The lens will focus as close um, as about 9 inches or 23 centimeters, which is none too shabby. Overall, uh, for value to dollar, I give this lens a big thumbs up. I've seen far worse lenses at this price point, and I personally wouldn't have any hesitation keeping this on my camera body for shooting around and documenting life. However, if you photograph landscapes, buildings, really anything with a tripod or anything you plan to print, this probably um, will disappoint you. But that's all I've got for you for now. I hope that the photos or the review or both um, were enjoyable to you. But either way, remember to do good with your camera and we'll talk to you again real soon.